So. Um, I think we have now seen the whole business. We even have seen uh, things that are uh, kind of complicated, things that uh, are nice. Um, and we have seen competitors that do more or less the same job, but sometimes they have a different environment, sometimes they have a different way to do their business. Um, so we are now going to consider what we should uh, maybe redesign for this shop for 90 degrees for the future, which uh, I label task model 2. So we are kind of reconsidering the current situation and see whether we could uh, start. So we should start with requirements for task model 1. Now, to be honest, I didn't hear too many very strong requirements so, so far. Um, which could mean that that, uh, that everybody thinks it's perfect or uh, it's very good, but we, we could still look. Um, I think that there that, that could be comments from the client about things that could be improved. Um, and, and, and you could consider well, things about techniques that could be better. Um, maybe the, the things about the codes on the machine that, that are taken from a sheet of paper which has been changed sometimes. I think you modeled that this the, the code sheet it has been changed in the in the past frequently, right? Because a lot of pieces of paper were structured. Uh, we could also check uh, the ergonomics. Um, actually I think you made some comments the other day about the ergonomics that one of the tasks was much too much too complicated, right? Um, or, or didn't you? I think you told me two days ago that, that one of the tasks was very complicated and was too much for maybe one person. Right? Or not? Mm -hmm. No? Okay, then there was somebody else. I thought mm -hmm. you did. But, but anyhow, the, 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 you should look at ergonomics, at, at uh, well, usability, which, which is well known to you, right? So maybe some things. And you should also look at legal issues. I mean, uh, the, because people should behave according to the law. Probably they do, but if you change, it should still be according to you, right? So th this will give you opportunities, like things that could be better, like restrictions, things that couldn't be done, and, and challenges, maybe. And, and there could be expectations, maybe uh, that, that the shop would like to expand, or that the shop would like to, um, uh, to, to attract more customers, or, or maybe the shop would like to raise their prices because they could provide better service. So consider all the kind of things that, that, that from now, from the situation now, could be improved. Um, uh, just once back, and, and also consider here what, what you have seen at the competitors, the other shops next door, right, or in the other street. Um, and, and, but keep in mind that this shop would like to be unique, right? It, it is unique, it has on, on the outside of the shop, it gives me things that make me think of experience, right? So, and, and maybe that's, uh, that's different from the other shops, and maybe this is the strong point of this shop. Okay, um, now, um, I would like to propose to you design space analysis. Design space means the possibilities you have to design. You could change things, but you couldn't change everything. For instance, it would be very hard to expand the space on the floor because there's no more space on the floor and there's the street and we could not just rebuild the, the, the shop, right? So, uh, so we are going to uh, analyze the possibilities we have. <laughs> and in order to do that, we need a rationale. We need a reason to change. So design in our world is not just artistic design but it's designed based on reasoning. And I'm going to propose you reasoning with three aspects. Questions, questions which means how could we well, maybe uh, improve the quality of the coffee or improve the experience of the customers um, or uh, improve the, the, the working conditions of the barista. Um, and we have options that are possibilities to change things and we have criteria. Why should we accept an option or why should we not? 
And, uh, and I'm going to talk you through these different aspects, to questions, options, and criteria, Q, O, C. And, and if you would uh, ever look at the internet for uh, information about design rationale, you could type design rationale, or you could type Q, O, C. And you would get the same literature, because design rationale and Q, O, C are, in many cases, considered the same word, in a way. Uh, uh, but the first thing we need to do is always find out who is the owner of a question, meaning who is the person who will take the answer to the question and make a decision. So sometimes the owner of the question could be the, the, the owner of the coffee shop, or it could be the cashier who would now change his way of working, or it could be somebody who is going to, to, uh, to build a, a, new, uh, a new cash machine, right? So there could be different owners of the question, and any question you could try to answer will in the end go to the owner and the owner will decide whether or not he takes the answer. Right? So we can design, but it doesn't mean that we are made, changing the shop. Um, and, and in order to find out about questions, options and criteria, we need to, uh, to consider all the different design disciplines. So I call this guided brainstorming, meaning that in fact we should have all designers together around the table and, and, and then, well, try to collect all the different ideas. So this is complicated. Um, so in order to, uh, to help, we need some kind of a formal representation. I prefer a formal representation that allows us to communicate. So suppose you are the design team. I think you are the design team this day. Um, uh, then you need to, uh, to communicate together, but also you might need to communicate with the client and you might need to communicate with other stakeholders like, like the, the barista or, 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 or the cashier. Uh, and, and maybe you make a decision and later on things change, maybe later on a new cash machine is available or later on a new way of handling the, 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 the VIP cards is available, then you should be able to reconsider your decisions, backtracking. Backtracking is, is a uh, a name used in software engineering, but it's also named uh, used in design. You could make a decision, and if after one year there is a completely new coffee machine that has already a, a way to print receipts, that then you should be able to come back to your decisions, right? Not start again, but you should say, okay, now we have a different situation. So, um, consequently, I would like to um, to have a, a model way, and and a model means that we have three sources. We have task modeling one, which is the requirements and the client's new initial intentions um, and, and, and anything that's currently in the shop and maybe things that you would like to change. And these could lead to questions. So questions, I always use the cue here. Questions um, for changing things could mainly come from well, from task modeling one and, and from what the client or the other stakeholders tell you. Right. Um, so this is the first step. Then the second step is um, the client has business goals. And, and, and in a way, in your persona, you already formulate the business goals. Um, but the business goals are also uh, visible, uh, for instance, on, on the outside of the shop. The, the shop wants to propose a certain experience. So this is, seems to be a business goal. Uh, there's a vision. And then there's ergonomics, meaning that everything should be usable, right? The, so the, the work of the barista should be acceptable, should have good usability. The, 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 the work of the, of the cashier should be good and also the cleaning people. And then we have maybe standards that you have to keep. And then you have safety measures, like uh, we have already seen. There is this fire extinction machine that, that should be there, probably by law, I think. At least in, in other countries, it would be by law. And we have the corporate image, the branding, because uh, 90 Degrees wants a certain type of branding. They want to look like a coffee shop that is, well, as far as I can understand from the outside, a coffee shop that brings you a nice experience, right? So, uh, so from here we develop criteria, criteria for acceptance by the client. So if you design any changes, the changes should be according to this criteria, right? Yeah, so this is the C, 
And then we have the possibilities, the technology and the expectations of technology, but, but also constraints because whatever you design, it should still fit in this small surface of three and a half by three and a half meters. Um, um, so, so this provides the options, what's possible and what's legable, legally acceptable. So the options are mainly what is possible now or what will be possible soon, like, like one year from now. Or, or what will be possible uh, what, be, because of, of the, 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 the brand um, 90 degrees want to expand, want to maybe sell also other things like, like food or alcohol, like we ho heard from one of the other shops. If there is an expectation that they would expand the things they sell, then this would also provide you with additional options. So we talk about questions, criteria, and options. Q O, C, or Q, O, C. And, and once again, the questions come mainly from what you did so far and from what the, the owner of the coffee shop would like to need to, to change. Criteria come from, from the, the business goals from the client and from ergonomics, and, and technology provides us with options, right? And now we are going to model this. <coughs> 